Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for inequalities AMGM, the arithmetic mean geometric mean. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to evaluate the arithmetic mean and geometric mean of two numbers, and you should be able to relate or distinguish problem solving and rough work to a proof. Our motivation for looking at the arithmetic mean geometric mean um, is that we're going to look at two fundamental non-trivial inequalities. Uh, we're going to look at the arithmetic mean geometric mean today, and then we'll look at the triangle inequality a little bit later. Both of these inequalities are very geometric in nature. They're saying something about a picture, but we'll see that they can be proved entirely from the order axioms. Our second bit of motivation is that these proofs um, will show off a really important technique in uh, solving problems about inequalities or proving inequalities. The technique is do your rough work first and then write out a formal proof. We'll see a bunch of examples of this. We start with the definition of arithmetic mean and geometric mean. So let a and b be real numbers. The arithmetic mean of a and b is a plus b over 2. You might also call this the average of the two numbers. The geometric mean of a and b is the square root of a times b, and that's only when it's defined. If you try to take the square root of a negative number, it won't work. Where are these things coming from? Well, a plus b is combining two things using the addition operation and then going halfway between that, whereas the geometric mean is taking a uh, times b using the multiplicative thing and then trying to find the halfway point multiplicatively. That would be like the square root. So let's look at some examples of these. If a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 8, then the arithmetic mean is 5 and the geometric mean is 4. If, the, if a is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus 8, then the arithmetic mean is minus 2, but the geometric mean is not defined because it's trying to take the square root of negative 16, which you can't do. So in some cases, uh, the geometric mean is not defined, but the arithmetic mean will always be defined. When looking at inequalities for the first time, or anything really, it's helpful to look at some special cases, not only of like picking some actual numbers, but it's also helpful to look at special cases, um, in scare quotes, with letters if you want. So let's look at some of those. What happens if a is equal to b? Well, then the arithmetic mean just becomes a, and the geometric mean becomes the absolute value of a. So in this particular case, it simplifies quite a bit. What's another special case you can take of a and b? One example I took was b equals 0, although there are many others. In this case, the arithmetic mean will be a over 2. I don't know why I said that that was equal to a. That's a typo. It's not. It's a over 2. And the geometric mean is 0. Now, we ask ourselves, how is the arithmetic mean related to the geometric mean? So we can look at some of the examples we have so far. And we can ask ourselves, how are these things related? Well, let's take a look at some geometry and, and figure out where is the arithmetic mean and geometric mean coming from, or specifically, where is the geometric mean coming from? I think it's not too hard to convince you that the arithmetic mean is interesting. So the geometric mean shows up fairly naturally in pictures. Make a circle whose diameter is a plus b. So we take a plus b and make that the diameter of a circle. So the halfway point here is the radius. So this is the radius, this is the radius, and then if you go straight up, that's also the radius. So the radius here will be the midway point, which is the average of the two, a plus b over 2. So the radius shows up, uh, the arithmetic mean shows up very naturally as the radius. Now, if you go to the point where a and b connect and you draw a perpendicular that goes straight up and meets the circle, 
it turns out that this quantity will actually be the arithmetic, or sorry, the geometric mean. That requires a proof using similar triangles, which we'll omit, but you're welcome to do on your own if you want. Now, if you take for granted that this is the arithmetic mean, then you have a very clear inequality. This geometric mean is clearly less than the arithmetic mean because this part is the whole radius. It goes all the way up to the top, but this arithmetic, this geometric mean only goes up a little bit less. Also, when are these two things equal? Well, it's equal exactly when A and B would be equal. That's the only way H could go all the way to the top. I find this picture quite helpful for understanding the relationship between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. And it's also helpful for me to see where the geometric mean shows up naturally in math. Now our goal is to see a, a proof of the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality using um, algebra. So formally, here's the uh, statement of the arithmetic mean geometric mean theorem. It says that the geometric mean is less than the arithmetic mean, so long as the geometric mean is defined. And one way to get around that is to sort of square both sides. And now this thing down here, both of these things will always be defined. So, so sometimes people call this the arithmetic mean geometric mean, since it's always going to be defined. But here it's less clear where the arithmetic mean and geometric mean show up. So we're going to see a very important technique for proving this thing which is uh, start with your rough work and unwind it as much as possible. And then after we've unwound it as much as we can, we'll, we'll write our proof in a separate place. So I call this stuff my rough work or my ugly garbage, and I'll mention uh, why I call it the ugly garbage in a moment. So let's start with what, what we want. Again, this is not a proof. This is going to be rough work. How can we expand this? Well, square the right-hand side and see what you get. Now multiply through by 4. Now can we simplify this anymore? Yeah, we can subtract 4ab from both sides. So then we end up with this quantity right here after subtracting 4ab, and then this factors to a minus b squared. And is a minus b squared positive, or rather non-negative? Yep, that's always true because squares are always non-negative. So this is the core of our proof, but this on its own is not a proof. And the reason is that it's starting from something, it's starting from what we want to prove and deducing something true. So a formal proof of this would start with something that's true. So it would start with say this number is a square, so it's non-negative. And then that implies this thing, that implies this, blah, blah, blah. And then the final line of our proof will be the thing we want. Proofs should start with something true and derive what we want. They shouldn't start with what we want and derive something true. That's not how proofs work. So let's see an example of this. Does this count as a proof? 7 is less than or equal to 1, which implies you can multiply both sides by 0, and that'll maintain the inequality. So that will give us 0 is less than or equal to 0, which is true. Therefore, the original thing must be true. Does this seem like a proof to you? Well, I hope it's not a proof for you, because 7 is not less than or equal to 1. This is meant to show off that even though all of the steps are justified, you can't just start with uh, random nonsense, end up with something true, and hope that the random nonsense was true. You instead have to start with something true and get to the thing you want. Let's see uh, another type of false proof that students often give. So students often want to submit this type of solution. So you have some sum that's less than 32. They do some stuff on the left. They end up with 31 is less than 32, and they give themselves a check mark, and they move on. There are two major issues with this argument. The first one is that um, there's no connecting words. It's not clear to me how these inequalities connect to each other. 
So your proof should read like uh, as, uh, a paragraph. It should be complete sentences and it should say how things connect. The second major um, issue is that they're starting by asserting that this is less than 32. And what they really want is to start with this, this clear fact at the bottom, which is true, and then go backwards. So that's how one way to fix it. So one common mistake is that um, your proof must begin with something that's true or assumed and derive what you want. So that's the true thing. You can't start with what you want to prove and then deduce something true. Another common question I get is, should I include my ugly, ugly garbage in my beautiful solution? And right away, the, the way I worded that should give you your answer. I partly call this ugly garbage because I don't want people to include it with their beautiful work. All you need for your proof is your proof. You don't have to give me all of the scrap work that you do and all of the like receipts for your uh, transit that it took you to go to the library and do the work and stuff like that. All you have to do is submit the proof. Please keep all of your ugly garbage and things like that uh, to yourself. So instead of submitting um, both uh, a very beautiful rough work and a very beautiful proof, just do the second one. Just include the proof for me, please. We're going to end off with a very short, beautiful picture proof of the AMGM. So here's a, a square that I've drawn where I have put A and then B, A and then B, A and then B, A and then B. So the total area of this whole thing is A plus B squared. There are four rectangles here, and each rectangle has a side length A and B, so they each have area AB. So the total area of these four rectangles is 4AB. So clearly, 4AB is going to be less than or equal to the total area, which is A plus B squared. And there we go. We've basically proved the arithmetic mean geometric mean. As a challenge to you, um, behold, this picture is basically the proof of a famous theorem. Which one? So this looks a lot like the arithmetic mean geometric mean setup, but I've drawn diagonals instead of rectangles. So play around with this. It's a proof of a famous theorem, and you know what that famous theorem is. Let's end with some reflection. How will you remember whether it's the arithmetic mean is less than or equal to the geometric mean, or vice versa? Do geometric proofs and picture proofs count as real proofs? What is the value of a picture proof? Which of the three proofs of the AMGM do you prefer? The circle proof, the algebra proof, or the rectangle proof? Thank you very much and have a good day.